Hi Mitternacht! This video is the second part of my series about police stops in the US. I present a paper which analyzed 44 million traffic stops. This paper was published in 2018 by the Department of Political Science of the University of North Carolina. To start off, there were two questions as the basis of this work. What is the scope of the disparities? What is the cause of the disparities? The first section is a multi-state analysis and the second focuses on Charlotte in North Carolina because the data is very detailed and available through an open data portal. This paper examines the factor race in traffic stops after contextual factors were taken into consideration. This is especially important due to potential implicit bias, so not racism per se. These biases can be influential when split-second decisions are necessary and can lead to grave situations, for example if it involves a police officer shooting a person. Another potential cause are institutional practices, like targeting certain neighborhoods for more intensive policing. The Hypothesis Race is still a factor, even if contextual factors are accounted for. If this is true, differences should be quantifiable with large data sets and be statistically robust that considering other factors does not eliminate them. The search rates should be different between racial groups and this should hold true across various states. This paper limits to searches because they are tightly connected to suspicion and hence with bias. Since contextual factors are included, Mere summaries of stops or similar datasets are not viable, which limited the useful data. The states which provide detailed data on a micro level are Connecticut, Illinois, Maryland and North Carolina. How was the data used? First, ratios of search rates were calculated to compare black and Hispanic search rates to white ones. Second. For each agency a regression was fitted to consider every available contextual factor. Third, the ratios of the regression were compared to the search rate ratios to determine how contextual factors come into play. Fourth, the search rate ratios were used to predict the regression coefficients. This is to test how suitable collecting simple search rates is to determine racial bias. Fifth, Charlotte was examined in depth and with an exact matching method the robustness of the findings were tested. In total approximately 44.2 million stops and 1.5 million searches are considered. Because the number of searches were rather low, two thresholds had to be met for consideration. Namely over 10,000 stops as well as a minimum of 100 white, 100 black and 100 Hispanic drivers stopped. If agencies did not meet these requirements within a year, the numbers of several were summed up until they did. Agencies which did not reach the thresholds were dropped. The calculation of search rate ratios is a mean to compare search rates across various racial groups. If the ratio exceeds one, the search rate of minority drivers is higher than of white ones and vice versa below one. A regression analysis was performed which predicts if a search is followed by a traffic stop while also considering other factors. The regression uses the following variables, all except for one are self-explanatory. The one being the high disparity value, which was generated if an officer has 1. At least 50 stops of white drivers 2. At least 50 stops of black or Hispanic drivers 3. A higher search rate than other officers of their agency and 4. The search rate of black or Hispanic drivers is at least a factor 2 higher than that of white ones. This takes account of bad apples in agencies and facilitates the separation of them and any other factors which are related to race. In other words, if these officers are already considered, any other factor which involves race is based on a different reason than some outliers which skew the numbers. The majority of search rate ratios are exceeding 1, which also holds true for the results of the regression. 
The median values for both ratios are above 2, which denotes that the search rates are on average twice as high compared to white drivers. Because the regression was used to account for non-racial factors, the results are lower, but still quite high. In the graphics this is visible as well, since the frequency of odds ratio above 1 is closer to 1 compared to the search rate ratios. This means that black and Hispanic drivers are more likely to be searched than white drivers, even after considering contextual factors. Now to the prediction of logistic odds ratios with search rate ratios. The correlation of both sets of values was calculated. If it is indeed possible to determine a high correlation, the claim of being able to approximately predict logistic odds ratios with search rate ratios will be based on evidence. In this graphic, every circle represents an agency in one of the four states. The dashed line stands for equal search rate ratio and logistic odds ratio. The solid line represents the regression. In both cases, this line is slightly skewed to the right because the odds ratio tends to be lower than the search rate ratio. Again, this shows the contextual factors between white and minority drivers. This difference can be measured with the slope, which results in 0.86 for blacks and 0.83 for Hispanics. This means the contextual factors can be summed up to 14 and 17 percent, respectively. However, that also means the majority is still tied directly to race and not other factors. Each graphic features two dotted lines as well, which stand for the value 1 of each axis. If a circle is above one of the x-axis, this indicates that minority drivers are searched more frequently than white drivers. A circle above one of the y-axis implies that the likelihood of minority drivers to be searched is higher than white ones. A huge portion of points surpasses both values. Between white and black drivers, most values for both ratios are between 1 and 4, so black drivers are searched up to four times the rate of white ones. For Hispanic drivers, the search rate ratios are mostly between 1 and 6, and the odds ratios are between 1 and 5. For Hispanics, the variance is very pronounced, so there are many agencies with higher search rates, up to 10 times. If the effect of race were non-existent, the regression line's slope would be 0, and all values would be along 1 on the y-axis. Since this is not the case, this visually represents the drastic difference between racial groups after adjusting for non-racial factors. High search rate ratios go hand in hand with odds ratios with little deviation. This makes it clear that search rate alone is a good indicator for estimating racial disparities. Additionally, it shows that contextual factors cannot explain all the differences. Now to an analysis not based on data which is available, but on factors which are not collected almost anywhere. These are, among others, the neighborhood or precinct in which stops occurred, or the officers involved. Some neighborhoods with more crime require more personnel, which results in more stops and searches. The problem is of course if they use lower search thresholds depending on the location, which might correlate with racial groups. Neighborhoods can generate effects which lead to racial disparities, but these are not available for most datasets. But such data is collected in Charlotte in North Carolina. It is a good model city, because there are significant populations of white, black and Hispanic persons, and distinct neighborhoods based on race and economic status exist as well. The police department has divided the city into 13 divisions. The traffic stop data with expanded information was available for 2016 and 2017. 
The additional data includes traffic stops assigned to each division and information about officer traits. The data was examined in two ways. First, similar regressions were used as before, but divisions and officer characteristics were considered. Second, stops were matched based on driver, officer and contextual information and followed by a comparison between racial groups regarding the percentages of searches. These graphics show the stops and search rate for each racial group per division. In every division the search rate of minority drivers is higher than white drivers, but the range varies a lot. The search rate ratios are depicted for each division. Of course, the search rate ratio is higher in every case for both minority groups. For black drivers the range is higher, namely up to 7.87 times, compared to Hispanic drivers with up to 3.8 times. If the race of the officers is considered, the search rate for white drivers is still the lowest across all racial groups. The search rate ratio for black versus white is the highest among black officers with 4.01 compared to white ones with 3.66 and Hispanic ones with 2.41. The search rate ratio of Hispanic drivers is 2.98 for black officers, 2.2 for white ones and 2 for Hispanic ones. On the other hand, the search rate is 4.91% of all stops for white officers compared to 2.5% for black ones and 4.47% for Hispanic ones. So the ratio of white officers may be lower than black officers, but the search rate is the highest. In the end, minority drivers are targeted more often than white drivers by all officers. Now, how are officer traits and the divisions affecting these race effects? To examine this question, the same regression as before was applied. The variables of the last one were included once more. For the second regression, officer traits were considered. For drivers and officers, white and female were treated as the reference. In the third regression, the divisions were included. The coefficient for black drivers is above 1 in all regression models. The values decrease after the considerations made in model 2 and 3. So some part is due to location and officer trait, but even then they are more than twice as likely to be searched than white drivers. The values for Hispanic drivers are not that clear, since the decrease leads to a value close to 1 and the statistical significance is slim. Regarding the officer trait, there was also the gender examined and the result was that male officers were more likely to conduct searches than female officers, namely about 80%. Service experience also influences the search rate, which decreases about 6% with more years of service. Because of the wealth of data available, there is the possibility of exact matching. This means that all the data of one stop is matched to another one except for race, to examine the outcome. So, for example, a 20-year-old black male was stopped for broken lights in a certain month in a certain neighborhood by a white male officer with three years of service, compared to a white driver stopped by a similar officer. This matching resulted in 9,220 similar stops for black drivers and 1,916 matches for Hispanic drivers. Comparing all the matches revealed that for black versus white the search rates are 2.1% versus 1.1%, which leads to a search rate ratio of 1.9. In the case of Hispanic to white it is 1.1 to 0.5%, so a ratio of 1.6. This means that black drivers are 90% more likely to be searched than pretty much identical white drivers and for Hispanics it is 60% higher. Even when so many factors are matched, there is still a gap, which implies that the search rate is influenced by race and not just contextual factors. This may not be as extreme when less factors are considered, but it is still a huge gap. As a conclusion, after various tests which limit data to consider contextual factors, 
the disparities remain at a high level. The decrease by including them is significant, but the gap remains, which cannot be explained by these factors. Even when matching the data of stop situations to limit the data to identical situations besides race, the likelihood is for black drivers 90% and for Hispanic drivers 60% higher compared to white drivers. If the data is less restricted, the disparities are much higher and across hundreds of agencies the rates are on average twice the rate of white drivers. The reasons are manifold, for example inherent bias expressed by police officers or more offensively oriented policing depending on the neighborhood. Discovering the reasons are part of future examinations and this paper indicates that there is more research necessary since there are no other factors which could explain the disparities. If there are other factors present which contribute to these differences, police agencies should correct them. Otherwise, these findings have to be accepted and ways to deal with them have to be researched. That was quite number heavy. I commend you for your attention. Anyway, I wish you all a magnificent day.